We are back, ladies and gentlemen, today on the podcast, 30 for 30, knowledge is not power. What? And dating your training partners. We'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, we are back. I am Bill Jones, head instructor, top-level martial arts in downtown Cuyahoga Falls. It is a beautiful 62-degree November morning. With me, as always, after an awkward pause, is Mr. Edward Whitney, slightly above novice in all things. How are you today, Ed? I'm doing fantastic. Man, I destroyed that uh, that intro. That intro, it was not good. It was distract. I was distracted. It's almost like you're slightly distracted. Slightly. Yeah. All right. But man, it is a lovely day for November, isn't it? Yeah. Did you walk today? No, my my wife dropped me off, but oh, that was nice of her. Yeah, but it was a lovely day out there today. We don't get many like this in Ohio. No. This time of year, or at all. Yeah, we're at all. We get 14 each summer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Especially where we're at. Oh man! So uh, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. I uh, I I just got to talk to a bunch of uh, PTA parents last night. That was awesome. Nice. Uh, you know, talking to them about some uh, some community give back type stuff that we're we're doing. Oh, cool. Um, finding ways to raise money for schools and things like that. Nice. Um, making fun of other things. <laughs> okay. I got them laughing a couple good. times, talking about how like I, I'm not the kind of guy who's ever gonna like hound a uh, a principal or, or a superintendent saying hey let me in your school so i can teach my <laughs> my program or whatever like wait you're telling me you are not the king of the demo no i'm not well no i am the king of the demo oh, okay, i just believe okay. in being invited to do the demo oh okay 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 i get it so so like there's there's for anybody who's listening and doesn't know i mean martial arts unfortunately it's an industry just like any other um you, you know there's a business side to it and and some of the business advice out there is basically like Hey, call every school in your area and like do whatever you can to get in the door and, and you know because now you're in front of like all these kids, right? Yeah. And I just think it's cheesy. I think it gets in the way of what the purpose of our educational system is and all of that. You know, I just don't think it's good. Yeah. And it's just not the way I operate. And so that you know, I talked about it. And I I know how some of the people do it. Yeah. And it's just really sleazy in my mind. It's like it's like imagine like if a Jehovah's Witness came to your door, right? So you're already annoyed. And they knock and you're like, okay, no thanks. And, and and normally what happens? They go away, right? Yeah. Well, instead they knock again and they knock again. And they set and up they a knock tent. Again, <laughs> and they set up a tent. And then they decide that, you know, they're going to kind of walk into your house a little bit. You know, they see that you accidentally left the door open. So they're going to just walk in a little bit and be like, hey, is it okay if I come in? And you're like, no, get out. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they walk out and then, and then like... Until you're like, finally, okay, I'm just going to let you in so that you shut the fuck up. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, that's how some of these people I picture are. them, like, sneaking in the door. Yeah, but they're... Throwing their clothes off and starting a demo. But they're dressed like a stereotypical Guido. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like gold chain, <laughs> shirt only buttoned halfway up, wide collar. Like, like, like he's trying to sell you, like, a... Uh, uh, a used car that 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 is, uh, y- y- you know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, like, I know exactly crazy. what you're talking about. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like, yeah. and I hate, I just dislike that method of selling. I don't think it's right. I think it's very cheesy and yeah. very, very 1970s, and and we're beyond that. I believe you, you integrity know. and business and stuff. That was one of the things that made me enjoy this job is I actually get to peddle a product I believe in. Yeah, and we don't even really peddle it. We no. bring people in. We say, take the class. Do you like it? Okay, cool. You want to stay? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I used to have to do jobs where I basically was the Guido with the gold chain. Yeah. Like, I hey, mean, buy this, buy yeah, this, buy this. To. I mean, do what you got to do to feed your kids. I, I mean, yeah, but, yeah. but, you know, that's, I, I'm blessed that I don't have to do that. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. So I, so I choose not to because yeah. I don't have to. It, we, yeah. Hopefully we can keep it that way. So anyway, that's what I did. Uh, I heard you were swearing at your wife in your sleep last night. <laughs> oh, it was so embarrassing. So apparently I was going off on my wife, dead asleep, for being so, a flat so be, Oh Yeah, I was going to say, before we do this, there's only one reason I brought this story up. Yeah. And it's because I love the reason that you were swearing. <laughs> we're, Please continue. I was swearing at her because I thought she was a flat earther. I was dreaming about this lady. 
I love it. <laughs> Who kept telling me the earth is flat. Hey, how about this guy who's going to shoot himself up in a fucking rocket? It's not really going to happen. I know, I but it's hilarious. I couldn't be that lucky. I could not it, be that lucky. It's hilarious. And you know, I'm a pretty gentle guy. I wouldn't wish death on anybody. But I almost feel like our gene pool is kind of trying to fix itself by launching him up there in the rocket. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, we're just going to get him Here's out of here. Here's the funny thing. that I th- And you and I were talking about this yesterday. But this is what I think is the most funny about this situation. Yeah. Is he supposed to shoot himself 2,000 feet up? Yeah, 2,000 feet. The hill that I went to school on was higher than 2,000 feet. Like, what are you talking about, dude? That's not that's not yeah. high in any way. Any hill in Pennsylvania is taller than that. I would say Ohio. You're not even above, flat. like, the tallest mountain, and you no. think that you're going to see something that's different than what you're... Like, go stand, go dr- drive up to the top of whatever hill's near you. The, key, you can... the key tower in downtown Cleveland is almost 1,000 feet. It's like 970 feet. Yeah. So you're already halfway there. So, just so here's going my recommendation. <laughs> just go get on an airplane and fly over the ocean. That's all you have to do. Wait. No, 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 no. I don't think you understand. Those windows you think you're looking out oh. are actually computer simulated images. Oh, well, that explains everything. Yeah, yeah. So I can't do this. I can't. Yeah, so you know <laughs> my stance on this. If you're a flat earther, I think you're an idiot. I Full stop. Can I be honest? Yeah. Part of me slightly hopes they're right. Just so I can feel what it feels like to be that wrong and just be like, oh man, <laughs> whoa, son of a bitch. All this time there was a turtle All underneath this. this. Time there's an ice wall. Yeah. Who knew? Do you know what I mean? Like, I almost think it would be worth it just for the that to J- experience. Jon Snow is standing up defending the ice wall. Yeah. And, 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 is that a Game of Thrones reference? Yes, it is. Sorry, man. I tried real hard. I know. It just didn't work. Hey, you don't have to like it. I, I, way, no, I didn't dislike works. it. I didn't dislike it. It just wasn't. Just wasn't my flavor. Hmm. It was. It was okay. I yeah. didn't hate it. Yeah, my wife still watches it. Yeah, you'd rather watch a documentary on clouds forming over mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird. Yeah, or um, cheese making in Europe or something like cheese that. Making in Europe. <laughs> Just watch a marathon of how it's made. Oh gosh, you you got my mouth watering at that. Oh, <laughs> like, that's that sounds disgusting. like a great day. That sounds inappropriate. Oh, I love watching crayons be made, man. You know. Oh, well, I mean, that's the classic. Although, now, let's be honest. You brought up the crayons being made. But let's be honest. When And when I say that, everybody knows I'm talking about the Mr. Rogers episode where the, he went to the crayon factory and you see the Crayola crayons being made. And everybody who's listening to this right now is like, yeah, that's the shit. That's, that's that episode. That's the real stuff right there. That's and then when the I mentioned episode. that, you were like, you know, and I said, yeah, I remember when Mr. Rogers used to visit places. Your first response was, remember when he went to the eraser factory? The pink eraser factory. And everybody's factory. like, you don't know what you're talking about. He did go to the eraser factory. He may have, but that wasn't the best episode. It oh. is universally accepted, apparently, sans one person, Edward Whitney, that the best episode was the crown factory. Oh, no, I, I think you misunderstood. I was adding that as a supplement no, to no. the Crayon episode. You made it sound like you liked it Not better. in lieu of the Crayon episode. All right, guys, so here's what you're going to do. Hashtag Black Belt Tips. Tell us what your favorite Mr. Rogers episode was. All yeah. right, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. In the news. So you wanted to talk about this. This. Uh, so, so one of the things that we do uh, for this podcast, for anybody who doesn't know, is uh, we do very little research. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, about 20 minutes beforehand or maybe a day beforehand, if we're yeah. really on it, we'll be like, what do we want to talk about? <laughs> you know, yeah. and then we'll figure it out. And, uh, Ed, you brought up this, uh, this thing called 30 for 30. Yeah. So I don't know if you've heard of them or not. It's nope. like this whole series of like documentaries they do on ESPN. And, and I know you're not huge into sports, but they kind of examine the, the stories behind sports, you know what I yeah. mean? The lesser told stories. Sure. And, um. Uh, they do do a podcast as well, and they did one about UFC one. That's awesome. And they had like Horian on, and I can't remember the guy, the guy, the original promoter. Okay. And they got like all the fighters talking, and it was amazing to hear the stories of what went on behind the scenes. So, do you have any examples? Um, so like they were talking about like Tua's tooth. He was the guy in the first fight who got like kicked in the face, and his two teeth went flying. Yeah, in that, the row. that that uh, I thought that was the second fight, wasn't it? I thought it was I, the I thought first it was the second, fight against I thought it was, Gordo. I thought it was Gordo's second fight that night. It doesn't matter. It, it's irrelevant. Yeah, but just just like hearing like the girl who was doing the commentary, who was Kathy like Long, a regular traditional martial arts girl, you know. Yeah, she's like, and I'm sitting there, and then all of a sudden these teeth go flying over my broadcast position, and I'm like, oh god, what have I gotten myself into? Yeah, I remember it was her and Bill Wallace. Superfoot. Yeah, and you know Chuck Norris was supposed to do some of that, but uh, his agents were like, hey, man, if this goes south, someone yeah. dies, you don't want to be involved with this. 
Sounds like so they, Chuck Norris's agents were smart. Yeah, they, they well, yeah, they talked him out of it. Yeah. But Kathy Long was, uh, yeah, she's a traditional martial artist. She'd done some kickboxing as well. And Bill Wallace actually was a very successful kickboxer. Yeah. But I don't think anybody, including the fighters, had any clue what was going to happen that night. Like, I don't think anybody understood the violence of a fight. No. Like, a real fight. Yeah, I, I think that was the biggest shock to everybody, is a lot of people who had never seen, like, an actual full-go fight got to experience what it was. Yeah. And I guess... And we say that now, uh, having seen it. Yeah. But, I mean, like, no one who watched it that night had really... Unless you had been in some really serious situations, had any clue what they were really about to see. Yeah, I grew up in a horrible place, and I even wasn't prepared. Like, I'd seen some violent fights as a kid, but I was not ready for, like, teeth getting kicked out of faces. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. And here's the thing. I guess Horion and uh, Hoyce and whoever else was there, they were just sitting there licking their chops like, this is fantastic. The more violent all these other fights are, the more beautiful Brazilian jiu-jitsu is going to look. Yeah. When Hoist just goes in there and... And casually puts on a side yes. joke. Wasn't even that great of a joke. It was joke. a shitty joke. <laughs> I watched it last night. Yeah. I mean, I, I say shitty, but it won a fight, so yeah. it wasn't well, that shitty. I mean, I can teach you that joke. Like, it's a legit way to do oh, yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's just very easy to counter if you know yeah. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And, and but like... <clears throat> um, Excuse me. Because that joke was against Ken Shamrock, right? Yeah. That, But that, that wasn't the winning one. That's just the one everybody remembers. Yeah. Right? I, I believe his win. I well, that it. was the actually the first submission in UFC history, I believe. I thought Ken fought before that, and, and, and did be, Ken get a yeah, heel hook before Ken, that? Yeah, because Ken got a, a leg lock. I yeah, can't that's remember right. If it was a heel hook or a straight ankle. Maybe lock. it was a straight ankle. Yeah, because he had already won a fight. Yeah, that's right. Because Hoyce's Hoyce, first fight was against Jimerson, Art Jimerson or Art Jimmer, whatever is his that name what it is. Who Mr. Came one out with, glove. Who came out with one boxing glove? <laughs> And apparently in the back had seen Hoist like practicing on the ground and was like, nope, don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so his plan was, if I get taken down, I am tapping immediately. Well, it, they even had him on there. And he sound, his voice is amazing. If you get a chance, just Google Art Jimmer talking about UFC. Oh, 1. you got to pull it up on your phone now. <laughs> but uh, anyways, he, uh, he he got headbutted in the, head, in the face like four or five times. And he said that, he's like, yeah, I don't want any part of this. But he, uh, and this was a professional boxer. Yeah, he was, he was a ranked. He was, he was pretty ranked good, like uh, cruiserweight or middleweight. Yeah. So I mean, he was legit. Yeah. You know, and then uh, I don't know. And then they had like this story from the doctor who was working the back. She ran out of ambulances, and she couldn't get more ambulances for the you know for the upcoming fights. So basically, like they had three ambulances working, and they were just like running in a circle between the hospital, just dropping people off. That is crazy. Yeah, and she's like, I, I considered quitting, but I knew they wouldn't stop the fights. And it was just, oh, it's amazing. And, and the reason I bring this up is because it really makes me think of uh, Sean. Yeah. Because as scary as it was for the UFC one guys mm -hmm. because of the unknowing, he went in there no. knowing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he signed up for that after seeing that. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't want to make him feel awkward when he was here, but how fucking ballsy do you have to be? Well, he was also, what did he say, 19 or 20 or something? He was young. Yeah. We think we're invincible when we're young. I don't know, man. Pull, pull up Art Jimerson talking. Oh, yeah, I'll see what I can do here. We'll, we'll see what we get on the Google device. Yeah, and then, I recommend YouTube, personally. Yeah, you're probably right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. There's nowhere else on the internet to go for Sorry video. if you can't hear me, guys. Bill's ego's in the way. Oh, <laughs> that word's hurt, man. Word's hurt. It might be true, though. So Ed is using his Google device to search for uh, uh, Art Jimerson. Um, is it Jimerson? I think it's Jimerson. I think it's Jimerson. I, I might be making that up for the last, since 1993. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, oh, you got him? I think you so. You pulled it up? Is he talking? Is he veteran, Art Jimerson. Art, when we started He's sitting there with one box in You up. said that you were excited because you'd get to tell your story. But why is that important? What do you think about our Jimerson story is there that people don't know? Well, it's a lot. I mean, you know, coming into the UFC, um, I feel like I was kind of blindfolded. Of course, I knew it was a fight and I was up for a challenge, but, you know, um, it was like a fish out of water. I mean, I was out of my um, fight domain for being a fighter. I just didn't, I didn't expect it to be what I thought it would be. 
Take me back to 1993. You've won 15 yeah. fights in a row as a boxer. Doesn't he sound like talked a about as an opponent for Tommy Hearns, yeah. a boxing Hall of Famer? Because doesn't and you know box. your friend Ernest Hart tells you about the UFC. All right, cool. So yeah, he's he's a little punchy, obviously. Uh, by the way, that's on uh, what Sherdog? Sure what, what? Where'd you find that? That was just on YouTube. Well, I mean, yeah, but tell everybody where they can uh, find sure that. dot com is the the poster. The okay. person who posted it. So yeah, go if you if you're checking it out on YouTube. Art Jimerson, sure UFC one twentieth anniversary. There you that's go. It's titled. I think I just think it's important to give credit where it's due. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. You know, those yeah. guys did a good job. Yeah, um, and, and like I said, he, just his voice to me is like the stereotypical boxer. Like punchy sounding, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like I, hey, Adrian. When, hey. I, when I picture a retired boxer uh, yeah, ten or fifteen yeah. years ago, they all sound like. I uh, was expecting uh, <laughs> raccoons. Raccoons. <laughs> no, all right. Man. So, so anyway, yeah. I mean, it's it sounds like a really cool um, thing. I mean, was there anything else you wanted to talk about on it, or anything else that like stood out to you? Oh, I'm sure there is, but I'm forgetting right now off the top of my head. But anyway, if people want to find it, 30 for 30, it's probably on ESPN. It's you on, can probably Google you it. You can or, find it on any of the podcast sites. It's not very often I want to tell you another podcast to listen to. but Oh, I see. I think that's that's the opposite of what I want to do. I want to, I want people to listen to podcasts. Yeah, you're right. I do. So that's how they'll find us, the you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm but it was just, it was an amazing hour. I just, I had a really good time listening to it, just hearing all these tales, like Horion talking about the moat. Like, that was a real thing. Yeah, they wanted to have a moat around it. With alligators in it. Yeah. And then they also considered making the sides of the ring copper and electrifying it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, these were real things. These these talks actually happened. That's hilarious. And I guess, believe it or not, there's still outrage that uh, people weren't allowed to wear shoes, especially by, like, Ken Shamrock. He's like, history would be so different if I could have wore shoes or if everybody was wearing shoes. Why? Um, apparently, just in his mind, it was a uh, a big difference in grappling. I don't think so. Um, he he fought one guy and heel hooked him. He never got near Hoist's legs to to try to heel yeah, hook him, yeah. and he got choked. Yeah, like it wasn't like it would have been any different. <coughs> oh, like I said, <laughs> you know, I mean, he could say what he wants, but he's full of shit. He's on the wrong side of history. He he got, but he's not. In, he, in my he is mind, he's highly not. respected. Oh yeah. He's, I but mean, I mean, when you say shit like that, you sound yeah. like a fucking poor loser. And yeah, you got your ass kicked in the first UFC. It's okay. Yeah. You came back, and people know your name. That's that's a lot more than I'll, I'll probably ever be able to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's awesome. I mean, these guys laid the foundation, and they know his name for the right reasons. They know that he was really tough, very yeah. skilled. You know, wore yeah. a speedo, like just didn't give yeah, a shit. Wore it like a motherfucker. <laughs> just, just didn't had give a all shit. the abs, all of them. He probably had. Help. <laughs> yeah. Hey, who cares? Yeah. Hey, UFC one. I don't yeah, even no think one, anybody cares. No one was. No, it was crazy. Yeah, it was chaos. Uh, the dark ages of fighting. We will never experience that again. I don't think. You know, there was probably a time when people said that. Like, imagine like when when they started wearing boxing gloves and stuff for oh, boxing okay, matches yeah. and stuff. There's probably a time when when guys there were like, "Oh, fighting's over forever." So, do you think at you some know? point the UFC will become nerfed to the point where somebody will be able to sneak in and be like, "This is the real stuff"? Um, yes, I do too. Honestly, yeah. Um, not, and I don't know that it's necessarily that UFC gets nerfed. I mean, maybe that is, but I, I see it more like it breaking down. Okay. You, you know, like because that's really what happened to boxing. I think the reason the 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 reason the UFC worked, um, and stayed. And there's a couple things that happened, obviously. Yeah, but, there's a few. Factors. But one, it happened at the same time as boxing was collapsing. Yeah, it imploded on itself. Yeah, boxing got so big, and everybody wanted a piece of the pie, <coughs> right? Like, like everybody, nobody was content just making their their. Hundred million. They wanted to be the guy running the show. You know what I mean. They wanted to be the billionaire in charge. And you know, good on people for being ambitious. I'm, I'm not yeah, against oh, yeah. that. But uh, you, you know, like, so what happened is they 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 made there was all these belts. There's all these things, and now like it's a big deal when someone's trying to unify the belt, right? Like that's yeah. like a big thing. Like like, but it shouldn't be a thing in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I, you I, know, to some extent, I do. It should be one organization, and 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 because it's not. I mean, that process happened and that, yeah. you know, there were no huge names. I don't think at that time, uh, may, well, maybe George Foreman was doing his thing, but, but his like, second thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like the timing was really good. And then what happened? So the UFC at first, what, what happened was it was just this huge spectacle, right? It was just yeah. like, 
yeah, it was just human cockfighting essentially. Yeah. And then, uh, but people, enough people caught on and said, well, hey, there's something to this, you know, and, and, and it got saved, of course, by, by Dana White and, and, uh, the Fertitas. The Fertitas, who no longer own it, right? They, yeah, they, they sold they, out they for sold four out. billion. Yeah. Four so, billion. So I think that something like that will happen again. It makes yeah, sense. You've got Bellator, you've mentioned, and I'm, right now they seem to get like the, the old UFC fighters. Older, they yeah. They don't seem to get the, anybody new, but... A few. You would know that better than me. And, uh, you know, this is just from an outsider looking in. Like, I... It, the UFC has, like, like all this ultimate fighter on TV and everything, that looks like it's dying. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I haven't watched it in years. I think I think that uh, the UFC will eventually get, and it might take long, get so big that it splits off or its competitors become just as powerful. And at that point... A specific set of a yeah. circumstances occurs. And at that and point boom. is when somebody with something regarding that field could probably pop up. Yeah, because when the UFC came right along, it was like right during the Tyson period where he was fading out, and it just yeah. Tyson, I, I Tyson had, I was had lost, almost okay. looking for something new. Yeah, like you know, I, I don't know, I was kind of bored with boxing. I was looking for, mm-hmm. and then the UFC just. And I mean, poof. you were pretty young at the time, but yeah, I was like fifteen. Yeah, all right, UFC one, I was thirteen, mm-hmm. but you know, as it started becoming a thing, I was like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Like, I remember going to the old Roadrunner video. Did you, do you remember those? No, we had Rainbow Video where okay. I was from. Okay, well, we had Roadrunner Video. And they would have, like, the UFC tapes on the bottom shelf, like, right outside the porn area. <laughs> so it was, like, almost porn, but not quite. Oh, that's disgusting. It was, like, right in the segue between the porn and stuff. <laughs> I think what you mean to say is adult content. Oh, I'm sorry. I think, I think the, to refer to any of the UFCs as porn, you need help, sir. No, 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 no. But they had them, like... So there was like a hallway leading back to the adult videos. Yeah, no, I know exactly what and you're saying. And they had them like kind of right there in the cut, like sorta. Yeah. <laughs> and I like we don't to, know like, where to put this. Like I'd have to peek around the corner, and my grandma, she's like, "What are you doing?" With I it's just I remember this whole thing. And you'd be like, "It's a it's a fight!" I swear, I, I swear. I had her convinced they were wrestling. Oh. I kind of lightweight lied to grandma. I'd be like, "Oh yeah, they just got the wrestling tapes over here," because you know, in her mind, wrestling was fake. If she knew that stuff was real, I probably wouldn't have been allowed to watch it at her house. That's crazy. Yeah. That's Good crazy. times. So anyway, that's thirty for thirty. So check it out. You know, it, we just spent thirty minutes on it. Yeah, did we? <laughs> nah, but you know. Anyway, so um, I wanted to get. So I did a a, a, a mini cast for anybody who doesn't know. I do black belt tips mini casts. Uh, you can find them on YouTube or on the top level martial arts Facebook page. But uh, you know, I, I don't really I haven't uploaded them as podcasts or anything. Um, they're like little three to five second or three to five second three to five minute blurbs um, about. Things that I feel and I have found uh, that the most successful people I've met and read about and all this, they all have like these traits in common. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, and so I call it like, you know, I call them like black belts in life, right? Like highly successful people, you know, millionaires, billionaires, people who, who, who are self-made, people who are, um, you, you know, just highly looked up to. Um, and, and the kinds of things that, that they tend to do, the habits they tend to have. Okay. So that, that's that's one of the things um, I've been doing. And uh, I think there's about 10 of them up there right now. Uh, if you've never been on our YouTube page, guys, it, it's uh, it's top-level jujitsu. I, I should make a separate one for Black Belt Tips, honestly, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, but it's top-level jujitsu. That's the face, or the YouTube page. Um, and anyway, the, the one that I did today, and I, I kind of wanted to get your your take on it. Do you, you remember uh, the the old GI Joe TV show where like that had like the PSA at the end, like knowing is half the battle. Yeah, time. knowing is half the battle, right? Yeah. And then like as a kid, you'd be like, "Well, what's the other half?" And not knowing, right? You know, <laughs> you remember saying, like that was what every kid said. Yeah, like so. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to get your take on this and, and and see what you thought. But like, you've ever heard the adage like knowledge is power? Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I feel like I'm being set up, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, it seems logical. I mean, all right, yeah, fair n- enough. Ha- having knowledge, I think, would be better than not having knowledge. Yeah, um, and so I'll, I'll just stop you there because I don't want you to feel like you're set up. But where I take this is, is I find that there's knowledge collectors out there. Okay, but I, I don't think that's a good thing necessarily in and of itself. If you're not a knowledge user, I was going to say you got to be a doer as well. Yeah, you, you I know, think and that's like the other half, I've run it. Yeah, that's the other <laughs> half is actually application of yeah, the knowledge. Yeah. Like, like so, I, I've run into so many people just in in various, um, you know, whether it's martial arts or or business or whatever, 
who like just collect knowledge and they can spout off a bunch of stuff or, or like even better, better and like probably more useful to a lot of people who are listening is like, if you have kids, you you know, you're, and I'm, your kids are older than mine. So you've yeah. probably dealt with this a lot more and you're like, you know, they're trying to do some type of thing and then you're like, Hey, this is how you do this. And they're like, I know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're like, well then why aren't you doing it? <laughs> like, like, Hey, you know that project that you're supposed to have due is 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 due like in in a week, and they're like, I know it's due, and you're like, well, then, then why aren't you? Yeah, why aren't you doing it? <laughs> you know, um, what are you looking at, man? You're distracting me. Oh no, I was I was actually looking up something with uh, GI Joe. Oh, <laughs> you were going to pull I, one up? <laughs> yeah, I was going to pull it up. It's all right. One, one of the, the the let me was it like the old uh, like Sergeant Slaughter at the end of the episode? Yeah, but but I mean, were you going to pull up like the funny thing where where they 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 dubbed over new words on all of them? Oh no, I was going to pull up the action actual oh. Sergeant Slaughter knowing oh. it's half the battle. Oh, it's but, fantastic! Yeah. You've got to see the one where have you seen the one where they dubbed over it? I don't think so. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, we'll check. We'll it out we'll watch episode. it after the podcast. Okay. It's it it's like twenty minutes long if you watch oh, the whole okay. thing. So, yeah. but like if you haven't seen that, guys, look up GI Joe PSAs funny on YouTube, okay. and it is good stuff. hilarious. Okay. So anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so you, you know, like you get these the kids who are like always, oh I know, I know, and you know why aren't you doing it then? You know, and, and I work with some some people and 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 try to help people, and like I, I get that a lot, and they're like, oh yeah, I know, I know, I know how to do this, so, and it's like okay, well then then do it yeah like like you need to apply that knowledge now <laughs> yeah. like don't just read so so this is like my thing is like if, if you're one of those people who like read like 40 or 50 books a year and then then don't do anything with that knowledge what what, what are you doing yeah you're yeah. wasting time unless it's pure entertainment what's the point yeah i, I mean and that's different i mean if that's but i would argue that a, entertainment is application of knowledge right like like that is how i'm applying it is to entertain myself you, you know sense. what I mean? And then that would be the answer. Like, yeah. You, you know, because, I mean, there's books out there that have no, you know, you read The Dark Tower. It's not like you're going to get, Any apply knowledge. that knowledge, yeah. but you're entertained. And you that's the goal, Harry right? Potter at that point. Yeah, or whatever. You know, that's the that's the point. But, like, I know people who are just, like, they, they, they acquire knowledge to pretend that, it, to, to lie to themselves. Like, like they're going to, to do something with this or, mm. or like, like it's being useful. And it's like, okay. Having that knowledge and applying it are two very different things. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's what uh, the Black Belt Tips mini podcast, or mini cast as I call it, was about today. <laughs> so Ed's like, <laughs> so just so you guys know what just happened, Ed's trying to, like, twiddle a, a pen in, so around silently. his fingers, like, silently. Like a ninja. <laughs> Like a ninja, but also like like he's like a uh, rock star, like banging on drums and then like flipping it around, but like in slow motion, or like or even better, like Iceman in 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 the beginning of you ever see Top Gun? Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Val Kilmer. By the way, this is a thing Val Kilmer, Kilmer Kilmer does in every single movie. If you've never noticed, in in Top Gun, he's twiddling the, the pen. Oh okay. In Tombstone, he's flipping a. Uh, uh, I remember that. A, he does. A finger dance of some sort with with an item. That's every his every thing, movie huh? he's in, that's his thing. Okay. So anyway, he's trying to finger dance this pen, and Did it he just, do it in Batman. Probably. Oh, okay. Who cares? Does that movie really even exist? <laughs> um, not, uh, speaking, not Batman one eighty nine or or Batman Returns. We're talking about any of the ones after that. Okay. <laughs> Michael Keaton, non Michael Keaton Batman's and the Joel Schumacher era just didn't happen for me i don't know what any of that means but yeah those first two were pretty good yeah okay <laughs> then after that they got bad yeah real bad i would argue the second one was uh, only okay i mean that's where if you watch back it's very 90s is it yes i was gonna say last time i seen it i was probably 14 so there, there's a part where like uh you know there's like a bat mini disc like he, he's, oh yeah i remember he's that playing it playing back and like he like <laughs> mini disc yeah and and it, like he he closes it and it you know it's the part where like penguin's going i'm gonna play this city like a harp from hell and, <laughs> god that tells you how many times i've seen it huh and and uh like he like like i don't know what's it called he scratches it where he goes on a mini disc yeah oh or, wow yeah right because it doesn't work that way but anyway nice it was very 90s it, that sounds very 90s <laughs> Um, he pulls out his. What the hell were phone. we talking about? Oh yeah, so so Ed's twiddling his pen, 
and it just drops to the ground. And then he like puts his hands together into his I lap. I was in a mid-air as, twirl. As though he wasn't doing anything. I was like playing pour some sugar on me in my head, you know? <laughs> <laughs> good, good that you're engaged, Ed. Good yeah. that you're engaged. I'm, I'm joined the club here. Yeah. Where, where are we at? All right. So uh, what, what's this other thing you said? D- dirty dancing? What's, what else is on your list? Boy, you're just on the 80s and 90s kick this morning. It looks like date, dating. Dating, trading, training partners? Oh, I was close. Yeah, you were right there. <laughs> right there, man. <laughs> so close. So, uh, what, like, what's your take on this? Um, are we talking about two adults? Of course. Are either one of them married? Look, we're talking about regular... Don't make it something it's not. Regular dating of people. Normal stuff. Okay, well then... Not, like, yeah, uh, inappropriate sure. relationships. For sure, then. Why not? Okay, I mean, that, that's all you got to say about that? Yeah, it just seems pretty obvious to me. What are your okay. thoughts on well, it? Well, I mean, you don't think that it would be awkward for people? And I'm, in a lot of ways, playing devil's advocate here. I mean, f- awkward for who? So they break up and then they quit. I mean, it, it, or, could, it could be bad Or for... their relationship is weird on the mat. Like, like kind of like, you know, people who, like, share the same Facebook page. By the way, if you do that, I think you're weird. I did it with my wife for a while. It's fucking weird. Yeah. That's weird to you? Extremely weird. Okay. Like, to me, that says you have no <clears throat> no separate lives at all. And I, I could see where somebody would think that, but actually what I think it usually is, is the wife has a Facebook page. And she's so insecure that she can't let the man have his own. Again, I think you're reading way too much into it. That's how most people see it. And then, what? And then what? at least in my case, I can okay. only speak from experience. And then the guy needs Facebook for something. He needs to communicate with somebody in some way, but has no desire to get on Facebook, so his wife will throw his name on it so he can use that one as well. I don't think that's why most people do it. Okay, well, at least for me, that was the case. (laughs) I had no desire to use it. As a matter of fact, the only reason my wife added me to it was for the academy, Mm. so I could get information from the academy because I had no desire to be on social media. So weird. But you were already on Twitter. Oh, that's different. No, it's not. Anyway... That, that was trust me. It was very different. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. So, um, you know, I, I think that the, uh, I think you're looking at things very black and white, like it's good or it's not. But I think what a lot of people are concerned about is kind of like the on the mat presence when when there's a, a relationship going on. Um, but we have like a lot of married couples here that. Yeah, but they were already married. I, I think what we're talking about, Ed, and l- let's look at it, is you start jujitsu. Okay. All right? You've never done it before. You start it. You're training for a while. A cute woman comes in. She starts training. And you guys... You're, you're attracted to her. How do you approach that? You know what I mean? So I'm not talking about, like, people who were already married and start. Obviously, well, I mean, what do you... Of course that's, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, and, and a lot of people... Believe it or not, there's a lot of teams that will not allow it. Really? Yeah. Mm. So when when you say teams, do you mean like competitive type things or just yeah, like, yeah, like jujitsu schools and, okay. and and or or let's take it to a a business or whatever. Yeah, you know it doesn't have to just be on the mat. It could be anywhere. It could be at work, whatever. Yeah, I, I like I can see where all the drawbacks would be. Okay, I could see. Let's where talk it, about those then. Okay, like I mean, uh, like the first of all, from the academy standpoint. I could see where it would be bad, where it would create like an awkward situation after the fact if they broke mm-hmm. up. But then, conversely, what better place to find somebody who's like minded and like you? You're already doing this activity that you chose to do. So like sharing your passion. Yeah. You know what? Just don't even pick I'm up. I'm leaving the pen. it down there. It just stays there now. It lives there. He did it again, guys. I did it again. Drop the pen again. <laughs> oh, he's so bad at this. Your air drumming <laughs> you know, is no, terrible. No, no, I, I got to give you credit. You're practicing. But yeah, maybe I'm just trying to get better. Maybe just not during the podcast. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Going for the air drumming championship <laughs> in 2018. Yeah, I mean, you got to get it in. How man. is your air guitar going? Uh, I mean, my air guitar is phenomenal, okay. man. Okay. It's a duet thing. Yeah, I mean, my shoulder's a little hurt right now, so that's hurting. Yeah. You know, that's slowing me down, but I, I ain't letting it stop. I got a little tennis elbow from over drilling. Yeah, a little T-E. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, back to the subject at hand. <laughs> like I said, I guess personally, I'm not against it. Yeah. After weighing the options. I tend to agree with you, yeah. to be honest with you. Like, we don't have a rule against it at our academy. Um, but I can see how it de- how it could be very. Oh, yeah, it could I, get I, a couple quick. of things I could see happen, especially like in in the. Uh, so this this podcast is currently being. If you're listening to this like six years from now, because that's how popular we're going to be. Yeah. Um. You know, then 
we are in 2017, in November of 2017. And I think right now, the whole sexual assault thing is mm. bigger than it's ever been. Um, and, and not saying that that's right or wrong, that it shouldn't be. I mean, there's a lot of people who are scumbags that are getting outed as scumbags, and that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, this, what, what was this guy's name? Weinstein, whatever. Yeah, supposedly Sylvester Stallone is the latest one. Yeah, well, you know, my, my point is there. there's... Anyway, I, I think that we, we have to just be careful. I think yeah. that there's a lot of... Uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of attention being drawn to inappropriate activity, and yeah. that's a great thing. I, yes. I, I think that that should be drawn. Yeah, for sure. But I believe there's also that also creates a hypersensitivity mm-hmm. that that can happen, and and like so, I can see how someone might take things the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, say, oh well, you know, I, he made me feel uncomfortable when he asked me out, so I, I, you know, that that's that's wrong. And it's like, okay, well, did he touch you? No. Okay, well, did. When you said no, did he do anything? Yeah, I mean, that? like, like so. I guess that's my thing is like is how you approach it. Yeah, you know, in a way that's because because jujitsu especially is very close. Yeah, it's very intimate art. You know, yeah, it, it, that's a great way to describe it. It's a very intimate art. You, you know, you're in positions that are, if you were naked, would simply be sex positions. Yeah, for sure. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and I think most people would only think of them as that and, until you're you're training, and then you don't yeah. think of it that like that at all. I've trained with women. For many years, and honestly, it's never. You don't. Yeah, really it was think awkward it for way. me for my first six months. Oh, see, I don't even think of it that way. Yeah, but like I just after think, oh, six... I'm going to take her back and choke her. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like I don't I care. Can... Yeah, now it's just another person but, that's getting choked. But uh, I, I can see how. I, I can definitely see how if like a guy asked you out, um, you may not want to roll with him anymore, like because you're worried that he's going to have that thought or whatever. Like I can see that's how fair. I, yeah, and I think that is fair. You know, whatever. Yeah. And I guess I, I, my thing is, if you can approach it like two adults, and as a guy, you can see how that would be awkward for her, and, you know, and and just accept that that's the way it is. Or, or as a woman, you can say you you have the maturity to say, well, this is just a guy who thinks I'm attractive and asked me out. I'm not interested, but you know, and you take it as he's just, he, just a guy who asked you out, just like and if that's you were it. at that's Starbucks. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, and you have your own policy on it. And then the other thing I think about it is like, let's say, so let's say you do, let's say, Ed, I ask you out and you're like, yeah, I'm totally into that. And, and for sure we go out. I think one of the first conversations you should have because of how you met and it being a passion for both of you mm. is an exit strategy. Yeah. Like, I think there should be a conversation about, Hey, listen, you know, I and think it's really cool. Work. I hope this lasts for a long time, but if it doesn't, you know, let, let's have some sort of ground rules about how we act at the academy or, or whatever afterwards. That way, it's not awkward for us. It's not awkward for anybody else. You know, like, because we're not going to just avoid training days. Yeah. You know, or quit. Um, I, I think that's an important thing, to, a discussion to have between those two individuals. So you're saying just act like reasonable adults? Yes. But I can't just say that because a lot of people aren't reasonable <laughs> yeah, adults. <I> know. <laughs> you know, a lot of them can't say, you know what, it didn't work out. But you know what, it was cool cool that i got to meet you and yeah know you we better. hung out man that was yeah. a good movie we had a great dinner <laughs> you know, like, like yeah that's how it should be <laughs> yeah you know, or even maybe hey we had some great sex you know whatever but or, or bad sex or whatever you know yeah obviously i wasn't involved in my, in my right? case some novice sex you know <laughs> slightly above novice. slightly above novice <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's getting crazy today on it the wasn't podcast. Average, maybe it was slightly above. <laughs> well, remember, novice does not mean average, sir. Oh yeah, that's right. It's beginner. It was slightly, <laughs> slightly above beginner. <laughs> I'm a little better than a high school student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh man, I should probably cut all that out. Nah, it's not gonna happen. For sure. Your wife is going to be listening to this and just dying. Yeah, she'll laugh. She's going to be tear, tears rolling down her face. Turns out, man, I got a decade plus of loyal service. That's, she, that's she kind good. of gives me the benefit of the doubt. That's nice of her. <laughs> yep. Man. Um, what the hell were we talking? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so, so our general take on it is if you're going to do it. Just being a regular be a adult about it. Be a logical, decision, <laughs> decisive adult and don't do anything creepy. Yeah. You know, and so this actually leads me to uh, something that... I- I've got another thought on it, but go ahead with yours. Okay. And this this is kind of something that I've been thinking about. Fortunately, I'm married and I won't have to deal with this. So nowadays, like you hear things like, oh, I said no. And then that's a problem. Like if the dude just says, oh, okay, my fault. Like, I, I guess I don't understand how you're supposed to approach women nowadays. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> when, I, when I was younger, um, it was, you'd say, hey, you know. Well, I and, and I assume you're talking about, like, from, like, the sexual harassment like Yeah, just standpoint. like, I, when I was young, you'd say, hey, you're attractive. You want to go 
insert activity. Yeah, go to the movies or yes. to the sock hop. And, and if they said whatever. no, you're just like, oh, and, and you're embarrassed inside. Yeah. And you just go, oh, my fault, I'm, I totally misread the I thought you were Debbie. Yeah. Debbie, do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, my, my mistake. My mistake. So how about you? <laughs> how about you? But you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, a, like you had the right to ask. But yeah, like, are so, you still allowed to do that? Yes, I, I think yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. not a woman, but I think yes. Yeah. I think you have every right to ask. I, but I think... Um, as long as you're not a creep I, Yeah, I don't think no. that's what people are trying to get. Now, I'm not going to say that there aren't some, some people who are far to one side... You know, there's always fanatics, oh, yeah. right? Like, like you, you talk to a fanatic, I don't think that's the right person to talk to on any subject yeah you know because they're gonna they're gonna be way to one side it's like if i talk to a flat earther like someone who, who's like fanatical about it that i'm never going to convince them i could literally take them up in a space shuttle and circle the globe with them and they're and not gonna believe tell it. you the windows are projections yeah you know so whatever but i think if you talk to most women out there and you say hey a dude asks you out is that okay they're gonna say yeah as long as he's not creepy afterwards yeah you know what i mean like if i say no they have to be cool with it and, and I think that's really what it comes down to is it's okay to like, to like so, or, or even, you know, whatever. It's okay to like another dude. But when whoever it is you ask out says no, it's done. That's it. That's all there is to it. My response was always, oh, I misread it. Sorry. Yeah. And I, and I feel like that should. I don't even think it needs an explanation. Yeah. Like I misread it or anything. Like, just like, oh, okay, thanks. You know. <laughs> just keep moving. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if they're, if they're so, like, now if they so, get, I, can't, I just don't understand why someone would be offended by you asking them out. I mean, to me, that's a high compliment. Yeah. I, I, like, I, I, especially me. Like, I never asked out a woman that I thought that I, like, I was never like a player. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I never asked out a woman specifically for sex. Okay. Um, so, if I asked you out, it's because I wanted to date you, like, and spend time with you. Yes. So, like, to me, that's a high compliment. It's like, I think that you are cool enough that I would like to spend lots of my time around you. You know what I mean? Like, and have you be part of my life in some extent. Yeah. So I, I think, at least from my perspective, that's a very, that's a compliment. Yeah, I agree. You know, and whether you, you return that or not is, is your you. decision. Yeah. But, yeah. um, but I think that, that this is also coming from two well-adjusted males. Fair enough. You know? Oh, good. The phone rang. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a podcast if the phone didn't ring. Let's, uh, we're going to pause and turn off the phone for a second. We are back. <laughs> we answered the phone. It was a sales call. It was so important. It was who was it? American Credit. Yeah, <laughs> it was American, American Credit. Credit. All right, good. So uh, I'm glad glad we answered that. Yeah, it was urgent. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is this is what happens anytime that that number calls. We answer it. Hello, top level martial arts, and they're like, no answer. They don't yeah. say anything back. And and I, but if anybody doesn't know, my line is is telemarketers, meaning that like. I, I actually work for a telemarketing company, so I have I have a lot of patience for telemarketers, and uh, I don't have patience for for not answering the phone, even though I understand exactly how that that works, and that most of the time the person there's not a person at the other end, it's an auto dialer, and like it'll dial five numbers out. Yeah. For anybody who did not know, we're going to go into how telemarketing works. It'll dial five to ten numbers out. Depend you, as as the manager, you can kind of set this. Yeah. Like so, let's say you're 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 a, you're one of my callers, right? You're, I'm in my cubicle. Yeah, you're in. Please. You I get, mean, you my seat at my table. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get anything that fancy. Um, you, you know, you're sitting there, and then it's literally dialing five numbers for you at a time the moment you hang up. And the first person and the first that one that answers, you get, and the rest get hung up on and recalled later. So that's what happens. And, and or, or it might be ten or you know two or whatever, whatever depending the on the time speed of day and, and the yeah. type. Yeah, there, there's the type of results you're getting, that kind of thing. But anyway, I understand how it works, but it still pisses me off. Yeah, oh yeah, it's annoying. Answer the fucking phone if I pick it up. You want to call me and talk to me? That's fine. Talk to me, but answer the phone. Yeah. What the hell were we talking about? We're talking about not being a creepo. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to ask women out. Just don't be a creepo. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's <laughs> don't be fine. A uh, and I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's funny though, because like you think about like all these romantic movies, right? So think, think about like any of the romance movies that are out. And when I say that, I'm not talking about like, you know, shades of gray. I'm talking okay. about like, like romantic comedies or whatever. And, and, and what would be probably labeled as chick flicks. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, you know, sorry if that's insensitive to say, but let's, that's what people call them. It's a name. Um, 
like I think most of the guys in there are sexually harassing the women. Yeah, like yeah. They, or they would be, like like imagine if you what's that one where like from the eighties where the guy like he's asking her out and she dumps him and never wants to see him again and he like ends up outside her window holding John Cusack oh, yeah. holding yeah. a boombox above his head. <laughs> Can you imagine? You mean Night at the Roxbury? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. But can you imagine, like, if someone did that in real life today, they'd be arrested. Yes. They would be arrested. You going for a psyche vow? Oh, and they would—they would never be able to work again. Like, like it would be the worst thing ever. Oh my gosh. But you, you know, and and I think there's another thing that goes to this as well. I think it's okay to give a woman a compliment. I think it's okay, but what? What women need to realize is, a man, I know you think this is the case, but just because a man says that you, you look pretty today or whatever does not mean he wants to bang you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, it's I can... It's t- not to say that he wouldn't. It's just that's not always the purpose of him saying that. Just like it's not always the purpose of you, you know, when you say, hey, you, that shirt looks good on you today or, you know, nice pants or whatever. Like, that doesn't mean that you want to, you want to, you know, Drop trowel and a lot head to the, the closest, time, uh, you know. A lot of the time, it's just because I can tell you put five extra hours into getting ready this morning. Yeah. Uh, you know? And it, we're just trying to be, be nice. nice. Yeah, like, I don't even think you're attractive. <laughs> I just wanted you to feel good. I can't tell you how many women, like. like Get off your high horse. <laughs> I literally wake up sometimes and I'm like, man, I want to make someone's day today. Like, like I want to make someone feel, like, really good. And, like, when I see someone, like, like, someone who's clearly taken a lot of time to do something with something. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like, man, you, you look great. Today. You, you know, did you do something different with your, with your hair or whatever? And like, that's how relationships are built. And I'm not talking about sexual relationships. I'm talking about human relationships. Just regular old people interact. Like, that's how trust is built. That's how, like, like, these are conversations. These are the things that you're supposed to do for your fellow human. Right? Like, yeah, I agree. Try, you, you know, you're, you're trying to make someone feel good. Next thing you know, you're in the HR office going, what's going on? Yeah. You know? You're like, wait, what? Yeah, I did what? <laughs> no, that's not how that went at all. No, I really so, liked her boots. <laughs> so this is why, you know, and, and, and like in every sexual harassment and uh, I mean, assault really isn't usually covered in those, but I've been in so many sexual har- harassment briefings in the military and in business life. Um, you know, like when I worked for a Fortune 500 company, you know, I mean, it was like, Twice a year, you had to go through these these trainings, right? Mm-hmm. And like, it, it's always a repeated thing, right? Like, for it to be harassment, it has to be repeated, and and you have to say that it's not something you want. Like, if I if I look at you and say, "Hey, your hair looks great today," and she's like, "Oh, okay, thanks," and then walks away, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm in trouble. That's not really sexual harassment. Like, now if I look at her and go, "Hey, I like the way your ass wiggles," a little different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like completely inappropriate. I but, get you. But now, if I say, "Hey, I like the way your hair looks today," and she's like, "You know what? I'm married. I, you know, I, I, I that makes me uncomfortable. That makes me a little uncomfortable." Then you need to stop. Yeah. But like, if you say that, and and they don't, they don't say that they don't like it. How are you supposed to know? Yeah. Y- you know, like. I, I guess what and I, keep... and I, I guess why we, you and I are bringing this up is because we literally don't know. Yes, I don't know. That, yeah, like we're I, not trying to be creepy. <laughs> yeah, like I, here's the reality of it. Like I said, I'm married, and I, God willing, that will be the case till the day I die. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to interact with women nowadays. Yeah, it'd be tough. Yeah, like because like I said, when I when I was younger, you complimented them. You know what I mean? And you complimented. If, yeah, and if they said, and if they if they took it and smiled and acted like they liked it, maybe you threw out another compliment, yeah. and then maybe you ask them to go to the sock walk hop. around the pot or the park. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm big on the sock hop. Yeah, the sock hop is where it's at. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Have a soda at the fountain. My dream date was like go to the All Valley Karate Tournament and then follow <laughs> it up with a sock hop. <laughs> Want to go watch me do the karate tournament? <laughs> the all volley karate tournament. <laughs> My favorite part about that was just like the way everybody was like, "Yes, of course." <laughs> Are you guys going to the tournament? Of like, course, dude. Like I'd love to see like the, the <laughs> what, what we need is like yeah, 
You ever you ever want to see like a movie about like all the side characters? Yes. Like that's what I want to see. Like the people who really aren't involved in any of it. Yeah. Like some guy who's just at school when when like <laughs> when like you know he's just at the dance when like Johnny and and Daniel come running out like soaking wet. Yeah. Daniel's dressed like a shower and, and, <laughs> and some Johnny's just like this me, soaking like, wet ca- like, what skeleton. The fuck. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, what the fuck? Did you see that? Did you see that, Bill? What the hell's going on with those guys? They're always at each other's throats. What is the deal with that? That new guy is always in a fight with somebody. <laughs> Yeah, he's a real dick. That kid has been trouble since he moved here. Like, you know, what is it about New Jersey? Yeah, <laughs> these New Jersey kids. <laughs> and, and or like, yeah, you know, or like even like the Avengers. Like, can you can you imagine? Like, like, maybe not like when when they're tearing up New York City, but like some other point in the movie where where like you just see all these crazy superheroes, nice. and, and you're like, what is going on? Literally, what happened? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Was that was that Captain America? <laughs> <laughs> or even more likely, is like. Was that a, like you just turn your head real quick? You're like, I swear to God, I just saw some dude dressed in blue spandex running by. Did you see that dude? That <laughs> yeah, am I the only one who saw that? Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good movie series. <laughs> it's just <laughs> random, like it'd be a good TV series if you if, like. Like, in every every episode is a different situation. Yeah, and it's but just that like the fucking Flash. Yeah, what the fuck, and it's just like real life people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do okay, wait anything? a minute. Clark Kent was sitting here. <laughs> yeah, like what the he fuck? was sitting right there. And now there's and Superman. then there was just this blur. And now Superman, who looks exactly like him, is in the sky without gla- without glasses. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's obviously not him. Lord knows you can't. Recognize My question is, do you glasses. think Superman killed Clark Kent? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Man, we should be studio execs. Yeah, man. It sounds like Superman Six was just written right there. <laughs> Superman's arrested for killing Clark Kent. <laughs> Turns out that's literally how it happened. Yeah. He murdered a real Clark Kent and just assumed his identity, his identity because they looked alike. Probably for Lois. Yeah, well, I can't blame him. Amy Adams is pretty hot. Uh, is that our is that who Lois is now? Yeah. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have done it for Margot Kidder, but Man, you and these names. Yeah, I pay attention to things. It's funny. You make fun of me for knowing know. fighters' names. <laughs> and you're like, but Margot Kidder. Margot Kidder's the one who played uh a Lois when during like the Christopher Reeve Superman. Yeah. You're like, yeah, when was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the one from like the seventies, the late seventies and eighties. Oh, okay. Now, see, I, I, see, I love the those. Time, those were Oh yeah. Those until, are the until reason you got to all the one others. with until you got to the one with Richard Pryor where like Superman splits in half and has a good Superman and a bad Superman. Oh yeah. Yeah. These were quality films, sir. <laughs> quality films. Still better Superman films than what we got in yeah. Man of Steel. But anyway, yeah. So what else is going on? Not a whole lot, man. Not a whole lot. We got a UFC coming up, right? Yeah. What's coming up in the Uffs? Uh, Max Holloway's fighting. Pedro Sour guy. Okay. He's fighting. uh, Why can I not think of the guy's name right now? Jose Aldo. Is it Jose or Jose? It's actually Jose. I did not know that. Yeah. He's a living legend. Would have yeah. I I would have assumed it was Jose. Most people do because it's spelled Jose. Would have been wrong. <clears throat> and the, the only reason I say Jose... Would come off as culturally insensitive. Yeah. Well, you know. Or overly culturally sensitive. Or just uninformed on the phonic system of Portuguese. <laughs> oh, so he's Portuguese. Yeah. So, so that's where I would... Well, because I mean... if, if well, he was, he, No, he's Brazilian. Uh, well, okay. So he's yeah. Brazilian. So that makes sense then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a legend. Were he from Mexico or Spain, it would be, be Jose. Jose. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Just learn something, man. Yeah. So, so, so if your phonetics aren't on point from foreign languages, you are insensitive, sir. Yes. So uh, what, what else? What else? Uh, who else is fighting? You know, I'll be honest with you. I haven't really paid too much attention to it. Are you serious? Yeah. I, are you okay? I have plans this weekend. Oh, so man. so rather than be distracted, <laughs> I've just kind of been not really paying attention. What are your plans? What are you doing? Just spending time with the wife. Oh, that's nice. You got to put her in, put her on the pedestal. Yeah. She even comes before fighting. I thought you were going to say put her in a hot tub. Uh, If the night goes as planned, man. (laughs) (laughs) Good for you. You know. Yeah, but other than that, there's not too much going on. Do you got anything else? No, I don't have anything else going on. Well, I don't know. Well, we've got like a bully awareness thing we're doing. Oh, yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah, you and I are going to do that. and. uh I'm nervous. Yeah, and uh, basically just getting ready for some holiday shopping and, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, overall, can't complain, man. It's yeah, been, been a good week, been a been a good month. Um, I think we got everything, though. I think that's everything we wanted to talk about. Yeah. 
So, um, how can, how can they get a hold of us, Ed? Well, since I think you lost the episode where we announced our Twitter account, no, that one that one was the Did one you that find just posted. It? That Did one just posted. It? Oh, okay, cool, cool. So we don't have. To I've got the one, yeah, the one I, I lost. don't have to beg for Twitter Twitter followers again. Uh, no, I mean like, but you should tell them that you're on. Twitter. Okay, yeah, you're yeah. always begging for followers. Yeah, That's you're how right. It works. That's how it works. So please, please follow me, uh, Eddie Jiu Jitsu thirty three. Yeah, and and I'm uh, at top level GJJ. We just started these, so I have like uh, four followers, maybe. I've got seven thousand nine hundred six. Okay, you're on a roll. <laughs> okay, so I uh, made that number up. Okay. It might not be that high. It might be six. It might be one. <laughs> yeah, it so might be, it might be my mom. So help us, please. <laughs> no, it's not that I need the followers. I just want you guys to be able to contact yeah, us. Yeah, quite know, honestly, I don't care if you follow me or not. But yeah, but ahead. if you do, that's awesome. Uh, and. Uh, the other thing I need you to do is a hashtag Black Belt Tips because yeah. Ed and I will. Actually, Ed's going to pull over, open his phone and see if we got anything. He's going to search for hashtag Black Belt Tips and see I what's been talked to us. Definitely am going to do that. I, and I don't think it, I, I did it yesterday. There wasn't anything. Okay. I'm going to um, do it in a timely fashion here. Yeah, that's okay. And then uh, don't forget that you can get a hold of us also through email. How do they find us on email, Ed? Blackbelttips at gmail.com. You caught me on the spot there. I was reading. Sorry, man. Sorry. My yeah, blackbelttips.com. Uh, Blackbelttips on Facebook. Which one am I forgetting? Mm, I think you got it. I think you got them all, man. All right, cool. So, yeah, we had no emails. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, that is how you get a hold of us, guys. We will talk to you later because I think we're out. Are we out? We are out. We're out? Out. Out.